What is up guys, Jag on Tech here. So over the past couple weeks, I've been in a rubble with myself trying to figure out what kind of video I wanted to do for my next one. I thought of comparing Android to iOS and iOS and Android to see which one comes out better. But then I realized that's not really the content I wanted to put out there. And upon seeing all these tweets and comments about iOS 14 becoming too much like Android with the widgets, the app drawer and picture in picture mode, it kind of made me want to steer clear away from that area or that argument and just basically try to put this debate into ease or hopefully finally put it to rest. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love a good competition. It motivates both companies to keep going, keep making, but I'm just here to focus on the hate towards both sides. Now, this might not reach a lot of people, but I'm okay with that. I'm just here to focus on sharing my own insights and thoughts about this whole thing. As a tech enthusiast, I embrace all kinds of innovations and advancements in the tech world. I mean, if Android decides to put something that the iPhone has had for years, then good for Android. If Apple decides to put something like the always-on display into their iPhones, then good for them. If I was biased towards one brand or one operating system, then that's not me embracing this whole thing. That's not me being interested in the whole evolution of tech. So I'm currently using two phones as my daily drivers. One being the Samsung Galaxy S20 Plus, and when that dies out, I switch over to the iPhone SE 2020. And you might ask me, which one do you like more? Which one is stronger? Which one is better? And to tell you the truth, neither. You know, I was once an Apple fanboy for like seven years. Like, I didn't want to do anything with Android at all. But then, iOS became too stale for me, and I started wanting more from my phone. I wanted more features, more settings, a more customizable interface, and a more free user experience. So that's why I decided to move to Android. Now, iOS and Android are two different worlds that cater to two kinds of consumers, the ones who want enough and the ones who want more. You're kind of unlucky though if you get stuck in the middle of that threshold. But after the launch of iOS 14, that gap shrunk a lot. And people were like, oh, welcome to Android 10 years ago. Oh, widgets. I wonder where that came from. Or for a company that has a trillion dollars, why only now? Well, okay, let me try to explain this part. If you haven't figured it out yet, Apple really does take their time with everything. And I mean everything in order to make things better than the competition. Like a few days ago, I was just listening to MKBHD's podcast with Craig Federighi, and he was asked, why does the iPad still not have a designated calculator app or weather app? And Craig said that they still haven't gotten around it because they want to design the best calculator app and the best weather app for the iPad. Honestly, I think he was caught off guard with this question he wasn't ready for it but you know how Apple does it you know how they take things differently and they want to be a little bit extra sometimes so I get where he's coming from although I did start to notice their trial and error scheme ever since the iPhone 5s but it really showed with the iPhone 7 if you don't remember the iPhone 7 was the first one to have a capacitive home button so this was the one that you really couldn't press it only gave you a haptic feedback and months after the Samsung Galaxy S8 was released which was an all-screen phone Apple was left in the dust and people criticized them for having an outdated design, but I think this was Apple's way to slowly familiarize their users with not having a home button anymore because they already had plans of releasing a phone that was just all screen, all gesture based, and that was the iPhone 10. Android phones, on the other hand, are very generous and waste no time at all when it comes to giving people more features and the most futuristic phone designs. Since Android is open source and owned by Google, phone companies can make as many phones as they want and easily shove in the Android software into their phones. So that's how they come up with so much tricks to the point that you really couldn't imagine that a phone was capable of doing such things. And hey, they've caught up a lot over the past few years. Like Samsung, they cleaned up their mess and brought you One UI. And OnePlus, they brought you ColorOS. And I can go on and on, but there's just way too many to mention. All right, second, we all know that iOS does have iMessage, FaceTime, AirDrop, and a seamless multi-device connection. And Android has Samsung DeX, a customizable interface, a better file management, better notification management, and the smarter and more useful virtual assistant. But they also released their own iMessage with Google Messages app. They also have Google Duo for video calls and they also have their own AirDrop, which is QuickShare. So if you think about it, they have exactly the same amount of features that everybody wants in a phone right now. But one question is always stated float here, and that is, why do people make so much noise when it comes to new iPhone features? But when Android takes things to a whole new level, people couldn't care less about it. Well, Apple was able to build their own empire because there's only one Apple. Everything from their software to their hardware is only used and owned by them. So it's very easy for us to keep track of their progress. For Android phones, they have a bit of trouble trying to build their own because there's so many to choose from, there's so many phones. And let's be honest, they do look alike, 
but features are being thrown around from one brand to another, so this doesn't make as big of an impact in the mainstream. For example, oh, new Android phone can now scan your x-ray, and people would be like, oh, cool, but it's an Android. Like, why? All right, so where am I going with this? Regardless of their capabilities, these two platforms, these two operating systems are insanely well at what they do. You can't really put a finger on what's better. You can only put a finger on what you personally prefer, and that's what makes it better for you. I mean, Apple users don't mind if they're late to the features party or innovation party because they can send blue messages. And Android users don't mind if their Instagram stories or their Snapchat suck because they can customize their phone to however they want. So whatever they need, whatever they want is already in the palm of their hands, and they're happy with that. If you like something with a cleaner interface, simple settings, and can easily connect to your smartwatch, then your iPhone is your best bet. If you want something that you can customize to the extremes, be more in control, and have a better file management, then get an Android phone. This debate has always been standing on, oh, iOS can do this and Android can't. Android can do this, but iOS can't. Of course they don't have the exact same features, and that's okay. They're both made by different companies who have different visions and different plans. Like I said earlier, they're both very capable, and they do make our lives a lot easier and better, especially during times like these. So you know, let's just stop the hate. Let's just be thankful that tech has evolved so much that we can experience things that not a lot of people could do before. It's a crazy, crazy world out there, but at least we have something to help us escape from all the chaos, even just for a little while. Anyway, that's been it. Just wanted to share my two cents about this whole situation. Feel free to drop your thoughts and comments down below. Let's hang out. Let's talk about it. I'll be coming up with more videos soon, so please subscribe if you haven't already. And I want to take this opportunity to thank every single one of you for supporting my channel. I'm doing my very best to make every single video a lot better every single time. So I hope you continue to support my channel and my dream. I'll see you guys in the next one.